So let's talk about the mistakes that I made when I first started keto. Starting with number one, and that is not raising electrolytes. I started back in 2018 and I didn't know that's what I was supposed to do. At the time, the prevailing advice was, well, you might have some flu-like symptoms when you're going through the adaptation phase, but don't worry, you just need to get through that first one to two weeks and you'll feel better. So that's what I did, and I definitely had the keto flu. I had headaches, I had fatigue, I even had nausea. Oh, and I had, I just had little, very little energy. I didn't know that I could have avoid all of that. If you're starting keto now, there's no reason for you to have to go through the keto flu. So over time, I started to hear more about electrolytes and how important that is. So what happens when you start keto and you're lowering carbohydrates, you are not gonna retain as much water, so your body's gonna let go of that water. And as your body lets go of that water, what goes with it? Electrolytes. And it's kind of shocking to your system. Your body is like, whoa, all of a sudden you have less electrolytes and you can start feeling these flu-like symptoms, headache, fatigue, nausea, and that's pretty normal. It will get better as your body establishes a kind of a new equilibrium. But what you'll find is that if you just increase electrolytes during that time, you won't have to have any of those symptoms at all. I wish I would have known that. And you'll find that as you continue your keto journey, it does make good sense to increase electrolytes, especially if you do intermittent fasting. Now you can make your own electrolyte drink mix. I have a video about that on this channel. I'll probably link it at the end of this video so you can check that out if you want or you can buy one. The problem is it's very difficult to find a sugar-free keto approved electrolyte drink mix. I've tried a number of them over the years and the one that I've come to is Element. Element has been awesome, and that's my go-to. In fact, this video is sponsored by Element. Now I have to tell you that I was taking Element and it had become my go-to electrolyte drink mix long before Element ever approached me about any kind of sponsorship. When they did, I was like, yeah, I was excited. I was like, of course I wanna talk about your product. I'm already taking it. It's already my go-to. So for me, it's a natural thing. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that has all the electrolytes you need in ratios backed by science and no sugar. None of the junk. So it's great for keto, it's great for low carb, or if you're just trying to be healthy and you're trying to keep sugar levels low and you're trying to look for a good electrolyte drink mix, Element is a great option. I use it when I go to the gym or when I'm doing really long runs or if I go to the sauna, and it's great when you're fasting. Right now, Element is giving all of my viewers a special offer. If you go to drinkelement.com slash keto with JT, you can get a free sample pack with any purchase. That sample pack will come with like basically one of each of their different flavors. You can try all of their different flavors and figure out which one you like the best. So I hope you enjoy that, and thank you so much to Element for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's get to number two. The next mistake that I made was, and this is gonna sound kind of funny, kind of weird, and that is eating too much beef jerky. <laughs> Wait a minute, isn't meat keto? Well, yeah, it is, but the problem is with most beef jerky brands, they're loaded with sugar. And so many other things that you don't want, sugar, soy, MSG, maltodextrin, hydrolyzed corn protein, all these things that you don't want. And it basically turns, in, turns a good option to a not a good option. If you combine all that stuff with meat, a lean meat, one, it's unhealthy, and two, it has the potential for increasing insulin so much more than you want it to. But there are good options if you wanna do beef jerky. So you don't have to avoid it altogether, you just wanna avoid the ones with sugar. The other thing you can do is just make your own. That way you can you can control all the ingredients yourself. And that brings us to number three. And number three is probably also gonna sound a little bit strange, but that is eating too many almonds. Oh, I was eating almonds like crazy. Now, when you're doing keto, it takes a while for your hunger levels to go down and level off. And one of the, the, the kind of bits of advice that people give that when you're going in between meals, if you're hungry in between meals, one of the best things that you can do is just grab a handful of nuts. And I give that advice as well. Problem is that I think that a lot of people gravitate towards almonds and I am no exception. Oh, I was eating almonds like crazy, handful after handful of almonds. The problem with almonds is that they're loaded with phytic acid. And phytic acid actually binds with minerals. Remember we were talking about electrolytes? You know what electrolytes are? They're minerals. And if you are taking in a lot of phytic acid and it's binding with those minerals, it makes it harder for your body to absorb. So not only are you low in electrolytes, but you're also you're taking in phytic acid that is making it harder for your body to make use of the electrolytes that are available. So I'm not saying you have to avoid almonds altogether. Just don't eat handful after handful after handful of almonds like I was doing. That's a mistake. Better choices for nuts would include macadamia nuts, pecans, and walnuts. And that brings us to number four. Number four is something that I would call carb nibbling. 
okay? So if you're like me, not everyone in your house is keto. And that could be challenging. So you might see someone eating something that's not keto, like your daughter eating, nibbling on some chips. And you know, maybe you're kind of caught in a moment of weakness and you think, oh, you know what? I haven't had one of those for a really long time. One couldn't be that bad. I'll just have one. Or you know what? Better yet, I'll, I'll have half of one. Oh, that's pretty good. You know, it couldn't be that many carbs. Not that bad. I could have the other half. So then you've had eaten the whole chip. The problem is that it very easily, a little bit can become a little bit more. And a little bit more can become a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And then you're saying, oh, oh I've gone and overdone it. I'm out of keto. I might as well just eat the whole rest of the bag. <laughs> So I can't say that's been a really difficult challenge for me, but it has happened and it can happen. If it happens to you, don't beat yourself up over it. Just resolve to do better next time and have some more success. Those little successes will add up over time to big results, but you do need to be aware of carb nibbling. Just don't do it. Okay, number five. And number five, it's pretty easy, I think, to, to fall into this trap, and I definitely fell into this trap, and that is thinking that because it says sugar-free on the label that it's automatically keto. The best example that I can give you is in the case of chocolate chips. Early on, I was looking for a keto version of chocolate chips, and I found Hershey's sugar-free chocolate chips, and I thought, awesome, it's sugar-free, it's keto, this is great. I got all excited about it. I even made some keto peanut butter cups, right? Chocolate peanut butter cups. I started making all kinds of things with Hershey's sugar-free chocolate chips thinking it was keto, right? And one day I made this really awesome chocolate bark, you know, with some pumpkin seeds and some nuts here and there and some coconut flakes. Oh, I thought it was great and I thought it was keto and I was eating it. I was like, oh, this is so good. And all of a sudden I started, my face started feeling fuzzy and I started feeling tingly. I had been without sugar for a very long time and this was weird. And I could tell, oh man, my sugar, my blood sugars are going way up very quickly. Why is that happening? This is supposed to be keto. It's sugar-free. Well, that led me to investigate, and I took a closer look at the label at these Hershey's sugar-free chocolate chips, and I saw that the very first ingredient was maltitol. Now, maltitol is a sugar alcohol, and though it's a sugar alcohol, it is not the best choice. It will raise your blood sugar almost as much as regular sugar. So that's definitely not a good keto option. So it just goes to show that you need to be careful to look at the labels and look for things other than no sugar. You wanna look at the whole picture. Now those are mistakes that I made and by all means, those aren't the only mistakes you can make. If you're wondering about other mistakes that you can make when doing keto, you wanna check out this video right over here.